and welcome to Dimension 20 Coffin Run. I am your game master and your story weaver, Jasmine, that bronze girl puller, and it is my honor and privilege to be present here today in the infamous D20 Dome. But don't worry, I've brought some of my favorite people with me. I have the intrepid, the enigmatic Isabella Roland. Oh! Wow. Wow. The absolutely fucking hilarious Zach Oyama. Wow. Bella Lugosi's descendant himself, Carlos Luna. Wow. 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 The hair. And of course, our very own starlet, Erica Ishii. Wow. wow. Are you ready, Fang Gang? Yeah. I love it. I wear my vampire fangs all year round. I love it. Maybe she's born with it. She is. Maybe it's vampire. Maybe she's a vampire. Maybe it's anemia. <laughs> Iron deficiency. Maybe it's a venereal disease. Oh. Welcome to Transylvania, home to bar guests, ghouls, goblins, an impenetrable fog that even the brightest sun rays cannot burn away, and home to your daddy dearest, Count Dracula himself. But Dracula isn't home right now. He's left you all in charge as he has gone across the sea to the new world. Somewhere across the ocean, we see his imposing figure, cloaked in velvet that looks like night, standing over a writing desk, penning an incredibly, vitally important letter for you, Squinge. But things don't go exactly as he plans. As he finishes the letter and hands it to his valet to be taken down to the hotel counter and shipped, we notice that a breeze blows it right out of the letter-carrying bag, and it falls into the gutter, where it mixes and percolates and bastes in all of New York City's filth before finally being noticed by someone. A small child picks it up, and instead of placing it in the post box right next to it, instead tries to use a lighter to see if there's any money inside accidentally catching about half of it on fire before realizing it is indeed empty and surrendering it to the post box. This letter then goes across the ocean in a rat-infested ship, dined on by all the vermin and all the insects you can imagine, before finally making it to the Transylvania post. And here, a bike messenger is tasked with bringing it to the Gold Krona Inn. Now, the bike ride is a very long one. He stops for a break and doesn't have any other paper to use, and so the letter becomes a victim to even more horrible defacement before finally, somehow, scraps of it make it to the innkeeper, a woman you all know as Granny Dalka. Granny Dalka takes the scraps of the letter smells her hands, places it carefully upon a tray, along with a small sippy cup of blood and a cookie. Her stooped figure carries it very carefully up the many stairs, and she knocks on your door, Squinge. What does she see? Whom does she see? Squinge was probably sitting at his desk trying to write some poetry about the Dark Lord because Squinge is, of course, the first blood spawn of Count Dragula himself. And uh, Squinge is dressed head to toe in a beautiful uh, silk uh, little boy garments that, um, I, you know, like when you see a creepy old painting, uh, maybe in a haunted house, maybe just online, if you search creepy little boy paintings. <laughs> which, <laughs> which you did. <laughs> yeah, I, which I did, and uh, you know, it was uh, haunted. It was a very haunted image. Uh, it, it's sort of like um, like a, a ruffly collar, uh, just real, as pasty as you can be, but with sort of the Nosferatu potato-shaped head. <laughs> um, like first season Simpsons, Homer. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, uh, he's like, uh, yes, um, uh, 
Uh, it, like he pulls his like <laughs> vibrant blue silk arm in front of his face and is like, yes, is there someone at the door? Oh, it's me, your granny Dalka. Open it up, Squinchy. Mm, yes. <laughs> I will open. Yes. <laughs> I, 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 you you see knocking. that door handle shake? <laughs> I, I, I will open it, but I, I, please give me the respect I deserve as the first vampire made by... Oh, yes, I know you're the first one. One second. Uh, Squinch goes over and, like, kind of adjusts the ruffles of his... whatever that's called. <laughs> blouse. <laughs> his blouse. My blouse is... <laughs> I'm all out of sorts when I'm working on my creative endeavors. Hmm. Yes. Opens the door, uh, regards the granny. I, do you have my cookie? <laughs> Before you, you see a woman whose skin is the color of sand dunes at dusk. Her hair is piled atop her head and is as tempestuous as her temper. She's old, but she's still got it. She's got like her corset all laced up. Mm. The girls are sitting <laughs> just right. And a giant voluminous skirt that actually trails out behind her. It's turquoise and embroidered with silver. Mm. And uh, she sees you and immediately grabs one of your cheeks. Oh, of course I got your cookie. I made them fresh just for you. Thank you, thank you so much. But I, um, I, I would ask that you don't grab my cheeks like a little boy in front of everyone because although I dress this way, I'm a man of respect and I'm a man who should be respected by everyone. And very much an adult. Is it chocolate chip or what are we doing today? <laughs> oh, I, I did raisin. Raisin. Like me, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> she also has like a little cup of like blood on there for you. Mm. Um, it's been warmed up to mm. body temperature. Mm. How delightful. Just like daddy makes it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of your Lord Father, uh, he sent a letter. Oh, wow. This is a letter? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like something a dog got at. <laughs> and then more dogs got at. Yeah, I, I can still smell it on my hands. You might want to watch out for that. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> God. It's like... It's you should lick it a little bit. Get some of that patina, you know? Oh, horrible. <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes later. <laughs> Ah, who could even do this? Who would, in the right minds would taste it? Not me. Anyway, well, it's from, it's from the Count himself. Well, I could kind of discern his, his signature at the bottom corner there. Yes, it's sort of hard to read. It says, Aunt Ra. So, <laughs> Count Dracula, yes! Yes. Roll an investigation check. That is going to be nine. <laughs> yeah, you can- I put a lot can... of it in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after, now that it's like missing pieces from it, and it's even in a worse state than it was when it got there, it's already completely faded. You barely are able to make out just a few words. The gist you get is that the Lord's train is going to arrive today in about 45 minutes. It's it's real. It's actually happening. Uh, we've been here for so long waiting for the Count himself, and I feel as though, I, you know, I we got here two months ago, right? And I... It, I, I mean, thought, I've been counting the days, if I'm being honest, no pressure. I mean... I, it's look, been exactly 60 days, 2 hours, 43 minutes, and 15 seconds. And we are definitely good for it. I just want to be clear. I really hope so. I mean, obviously. Because making your cookies, you know, in my old age and carrying them up seven flights of stairs for you just because you're too lazy to go down there, even though your body's hale and hearty and I'm just a poor little old mortal woman. You know, I try not to complain about it, but I really do hope you're good for it. Yes, I am good for it. And it is definitely understandable that there would be a surcharge and you'll have to just absolutely ask somebody else about that. <laughs> but even so, we've, we've been here for some time waiting for Papa to come back and it feels- Oh, Papa, that's so cute. And her like hand ah. goes to your cheek again. There's just sort of a divot where it was already <laughs> oh. pressed in. Like, 
like the raisin skin that I have. <laughs> Listen, we've been waiting for some time, and I knew he would be here eventually. And I, I thought he was, he's never wrong. He's never been wrong, because he's Dragula. Dragula is never wrong. I'm just gonna take your word for it, buddy. Yes. Now, for it to be the day, I, I kind of, I haven't finished any of the poems I was starting about him. And, and the carriage isn't ready either. The carriage isn't ready? No, <laughs> you've been here for two months. I don't even know if anybody's fed the horses. Oh no. Well, I hope, I hope. And we, you know how he gets them out of like, coach. How many extra horses do you have? Are there like 30 to 45 extra horses outside? What's, what well, is, how many have you not eaten? Have I not eaten? Uh, well, I mean, I, I wasn't sure that it was sort of like a buffet style situation with horses, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but that leaves a less of a buffet style situation in terms of who's gonna pull the coach. Do you have any sort of children that are sturdy? <laughs> You know, we might have a couple around that might be able to pull it, but the ones that don't have Brigeria or other some such type of... Just might work. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, their little legs, they can't move that fast. No, no, no. I'll leave you to it then. I've got to go downstairs and make sure everything's good. We've got a bit of a talent show type of situation happening in the lobby today. Oh, gosh. Okay, well, we, we, it's very important that we actually get everyone mobilized for this. Am I going to take any steps to make this happen? I'm not really that kind of guy. I'm not sort of like um. I I thought producer. you were the leader. I'm a leader in theory and in practice, not at all. I don't like to maybe finish tasks, uh, accomplish things, or do anything that is not of ceremonial importance. Those that lead from the front? I think they're not really leading if you're at the front, you're just kind of one of the workers. Exactly. And those that aren't even on the page, like if I were to draw a diagram, they're somewhere else, but they're pulling all the strings. And you strike me as that type of a smart, put together individual. Yes, I am that. A raisin looking man with a bunch of strings tied to his fingers. And I'm with not a sure... raisin-like constitution. Yes, pushes his face back into the right shape from where <laughs> it has been pinched earlier. Now, I don't know what these strings are attached to, but I'm going to pull them. As you say this, you see her kind of put the tray down with your little sippy cup on it, mm -hmm. on a table near the door, and sweep downstairs. As soon as she leaves the door, you see her kind of like, actually, you wouldn't see her. She rolls her eyes <gasps> and goes downstairs. That boy's gonna be the fucking death of me. I swear to God, I've aged 20 years since he's fucking been here. He's gonna fucking live forever, and here I am in this fucking shithole waiting on these motherfuckers. <laughs> Immortal. She, she thinks the world of me. <laughs> <laughs> Making me lug his stupid fucking cookies up seven flights and goddamn fucking stairs. Wow. I didn't think your life was gonna end here, Dralka. And she actually bumps into you as she's like, smoking and coming down the stairs. Oh, hey there, May, how's it going? What does she see? She bumps into uh, a young woman, stunning, classical, gorgeous good looks, uh, regal with long black locks piled atop of her head, wearing a gown that is the height of 1850s fashion um, and wrapped in furs. And she looks at her a bit disdainfully. What's cooking, May? Oh, well, I was just going to watch the performance downstairs. Oh, yeah, we got a real firecracker down there. We got to get you on the stage sometime, I feel like. Oh, really? Me? No, stop it. Do go on. <laughs> go on, though. I did play in New York in the Times Square. Oh, yeah, the, the Times Square. I think I've heard of it. Uh, you know, yeah, sure, if you're OK working for exposure, we'd be more than happy to throw you on the old stage, get you some new followers. I think that just might work, you know, because cause we're just waiting for um, my husband to come back home. And in the meantime, it might be good to kind of, you know, uh, 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 expose ourselves to these villagers. Oh, like literally? Y yes, like, you, you know, know. I'm always down for some good exposure. Yes, you know, just put it all out there. Well, I heard that's what you do for the count, you know, six days a week. Oh, he's not around. And usually it's about seven days a week. That's a full-time job. Yes, but it's all worth it. Well, I imagine so. Does he pay you for your services? 
What are we talking about here? <laughs> You're hard working ladies. It's not about the money. Well, what's it about? It's about, and her, her eye, uh, like she gazes out the window into the night, uh, you, you know, and a breeze comes as if from nowhere to tussle the curls <laughs> and the wisps of the gown. It's about romance and drama. <laughs> you see, we met when I was performing here in this beautiful little town of Transylvania. <laughs> I wasn't getting the parts that I wanted in New York, you see. But the moment that our eyes met after that performance, it was meant to be. <sighs> He's a lover of the arts, an appreciator, the finer things in life, like moi. Oh, he might be a lover of the arts, but I'm a lover of the parts, if you get my drift. I don't. <laughs> you know what? That's okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, look, your friend's performing. And she points down on the stage. Who, who have you made friends with during your two months in Fagari, the railroad town we are in? I would say that I have, have made, uh, like, acquaintances with everyone. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I'd call it friendship, but um, if there's uh, local sort of performers and, uh, you know, like folk, folk, folksy performers, it's quite charming and there's quite a lot to be learned from these, you know, independent productions. You look down at the stage and you recognize Mikhail, who is a, a railroad worker who is now trying to moonlight as a singer after your encouragement, after seeing your kind of glow, and he sings a folksy song. And it goes something like, my wife left me for a man from the swamp. We used to dance, we used to dump. That stupid swamp man, I want to stomp. <laughs> <clears throat> More. <laughs> it's so true! <laughs> uh, I wish I had some fair and bomb. <laughs> it's incredible. That but these... fuck that man from that stinky swamp. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. <laughs> How these simple folk just have <laughs> the most beautiful and profound art inside of them. It just goes to show you that, you know, uh, music is the universal language. As you say this, you you realize Granny Dalka has, has left and wandered off, kind of like plugging her ears and come behind the bar. We're hearing the same display. We see Alexander. What do we see? Alexander, or informally Sasha Ostrovsky, um, is a very frazzled looking old man of 41. Um, his life has aged him. Um, he has a lot of stress lines. His eyebrows are sort of always like, high up in the middle and low down at the front. Do you know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about? Yeah. And um, he's always got his uh, big goggles on his, resting on his very stringy, electrocuted, white, curly Jufro. Um, <laughs> he's wearing a lab coat and um, he is, he is transfixed by Mikhail's performance. <laughs> enraptured as he's watching sort of tinkering with a, a Moscow mule cup, mm -hmm. the metal ones, and making like a toy out of it that has like little legs that sort of dances around. But he's watching Mikhail like... <laughs> there is science in everything. So much we cannot understand how this man can sing about the swamp. I wish I had such power, but I only have tools. 
I mean, we also got vodka because I'm pretty sure that's what Mikhail's hopped up on. More vodka, please. Of course. You see her pull out a bottle and like pour it into your toy with the legs, the <laughs> Moscow <laughs> milk mug. <laughs> Multi-purpose. <laughs> Make a sleight of hand check. Okay. <laughs> um, a seven? I mean, nine. Yeah. There's almost an arcane air to Madame Dalka, Granny Dalka, as you all Is fondly Madame refer Dalka her. Is Madame Granny Dalka also bartending? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> she runs this establishment Amazing. from top to bottom. Beautiful. And as she pours in this vodka, you see like a mist rise up and combined with your own genius contraption, this Moscow mule mug begins to have a mind of its own. As you go to sip and miss that sleight of hand check, it slips out of your hands and actually starts boppling around on the table, dancing to Mikhail's song, <laughs> with vodka splishing over the top. <laughs> what? What have you done? I studied for decades to learn what I know. Do you understand? And you put a little bit of magic liquid into my toy and turn it into something incomprehensible by man. Everything I know has been destroyed. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Oh, I just love, you know, out of this whole party that came in, I just love having you around. You make me feel like I'm 17 again. <laughs> and you make me feel like I'm 39. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult. Neither do I. You know what, I'm gonna go with it. Could I have a regular glass so I can drink some vodka? Of course, you can Thank have you. anything you want. Fantastic granny. I'm so happy you came to town. You know, Fagari was just so boring without you, but then you come here and you get excited about the most mundane things and it makes me excited. And it's like living vicariously through you. And I just love you. Look at your little eyes and your little crazed expression and the way your hair stands on it. I could just eat you up. Oh. Literally, I could just eat you right up. <gasps> and I'd let you, my life is filled with pain. <laughs> you know, when I came from the old country, Grammy, it was under very dire circumstances, a disgraced doctor coming from the old country to be and live under and learn under the great Count Dracula. And He's I, a pretty cool guy. He's a very magnificent man. You and him with your tricks that defy God, defy science. It's amazing how you can just take a man's life work and <laughs> crush it. <laughs> Render powder. it completely just useless. Render it's like, it completely useless. It's like you wasted all your time reading those books. It's and you like couldn't... I wasted all of my time reading those books exactly. It's like you wasted your reuse, locked in doors, pouring over, studying, memorizing tables and chemistry, and you didn't even have to do it. <laughs> you understand. Dan, it's horrific and magical at the same time. It's absolutely fabulous, darling. You know, I'm gonna go, oh yeah, you might want to pass word along to me. Uh, the count is gonna be back in town in like 45 minutes. Holy fuck, okay, we've gotta go. May, get off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> why? The carriage is here, my darling. For what, what for? The count is coming. Ah! <laughs> oh my God! I'm so sorry, everybody. We must delay this uh, uh, soliloquy for another time. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you... May. I love your soliloquy. Ah! <laughs> Outside, Wetzel, you hear a scream as you are chatting with the carriage driver a man you know as Drago, one of the household staff. He is about six foot seven, stooped shouldered a bit. He has a large hump on his back. His face is a bit gaunt and kind of like an off white color. And his hair hangs around his face in like kind of a matted oily mess. He's wearing a dapper suit, however, and he's kind of absentmindedly knocking the mud off of one of the wheels with a stick. Yeah, I think he would see, uh, he would see this, once handsome young man 
uh, but he definitely has scars on his face. Uh, you, you see parts of his uh, skin starting to roll a little bit. Roll. Uh, every morning he has to uh, glue them back down because his skin has been flayed. Um, he has a metal arm. His right arm is metal. And uh, he's wearing this big trench coat and he has a little daisy on the side. But he's like very happy, uh, very sunny. I think if uh, when we start seeing them both outside, he's humming uh, that song <laughs> that, that we just heard on the inside. <laughs> oh, the swamp man song? Oh, Jasmine, how did it go again? <laughs> My wife left My me. My wife left me from the man from the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> he liked to dance. We love to stump. <laughs> oh, I hate that swamp man. <laughs> oh, More. lovely song, don't you think, Draco? Yes, I, uh, I agree. Fantastic. I'm loving it here. Everything that goes on in this town is fantastic. Oh, being able to stay with my best friends at this inn, waiting for uh, a CD to come in, ooh, it's gonna be so uh, great. Uh, who, uh, pardon, who is CD? Oh, Count Dracula. Sprig was telling me he loves it when people call him CD. Are you sure about that? I mean, I mean, Sprig is kind of a um, kind of a string guy himself, so. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Squinch? Squinch. <laughs> Squin what was it called? Squinch. 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 Okay, gotcha. Okay. You see, like, visible confusion kind of wash over his face, and he's like, I thought last man who give him nickname, he cut off his hands and hang him under a bridge. Oh, he's, um... Ooh, okay. Uh, <laughs> new, new information. Love having new information. He pulls out his notebook and starts writing it down. Mm -hmm. Um... Ooh. So what's like your deal, man? What do you want to be? You don't want to be doing this forever, right? <laughs> uh, you see him like kind of rebooting several times over. Uh, I'm gonna be a vampire. That's what I, I'm, I just feel like that's what I've been made for. You're going to be Dompier? I'm, so, I'm sorry, what? Uh, Dom, uh, vom, Dompier? Van, vampa, vampire? vampire. Dompier, you're going to be Dompier. Absolutely, yeah. The wretched, cursed creature of night, you're going to be that? I, uh, I feel like, ooh, so here's the thing. <laughs> I feel like that gets a bad rap. It's really not that bad. Everyone that I've met has been super <laughs> nice. You know, Wetzel, I care deeply for you. I don't care much for people these days, but You've never judged me, for we are fellow disgusting human beings. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. I, I be, be like you're selling yourself short on this one, okay? You gotta get some self-esteem. I've been talking to Dr. Alex. Dr. Alex, phenomenal. Well, how do I be like you? Tell me. Um, well, I... I... I also want to have friends. The life I've lived has been so cold and lonely. Since Savina passed away of the flu, I have lived my life as though in days, hoping that one day maybe I will find direction. But really, it's like looking down barrel of empty dark. The man is <laughs> singing again. He's singing. Oh, you gotta come over, check it out. He he comes over and he says, "This man sings of his wife who left him for man in swamp." My, my wife also left me. He's so good, don't you think? At least his wife is still alive. <laughs> my, my wife is dead. I'm sorry, what? If she was with Swamp Man, at least she would be happy. Oh my. I don't even have that solace in my life. Oh, oh um, ooh, that's pretty heavy. Heavy stuff, <laughs> heavy stuff. Listen, this is only like the third time we've hung out. Mm. I love you, I love your vibe. <laughs> Didn't know all that stuff about your wife. Um, but you know what? Things are gonna change. Everything is coming up Wetzel. Oh! Ah! Okay. You know what, I will start to say this myself and maybe I will also have friends one day. You. Everything is coming up, Wetzel. 
That's what I'm saying. You see a single tear. <laughs> oh, no, don't, don't, don't cry. Um, listen, I, whenever I feel down, I just pull out this really cool mirror and I just give myself a little pep talk. Hey, buddy, you're doing good. No need to cry in the bathtub. Oh, <laughs> my God. Buddy, I think you're fantastic. You don't need other people to validate you. But when you're on top, motherfuckers are gonna pay. <laughs> right? Can I try? Ah! Absolutely, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Roll me a persuasion to see how much you've like inspired oh, him. God. Yeah. Uh, 17, oh no, uh, 19. 19. You see him like change his demeanor. Like he changes his posture. <laughs> Drago, one day you will piss and shit on the grave of your enemy. Yeah, 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 more, more. God has taken Savina from you, and therefore you will kill God. But uh, no, also like about yourself. <laughs> not, not just about God. Oh, right. God plays an important role, but go ahead. Like, what's something about you that you like? I'm tall. Oh! <laughs> you are really tall. I've heard that people like tall men. That's very true. I have large manhood. What? <laughs> I am, Wait, what was that? <laughs> I'm a manly man. Oh, yeah. Large okay. manhood. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Usually when we talk into the mirror, we don't mention those. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> it's, your, it's your mirror, Titan. Treat it however you want. Why treat it? I strike fear into people, which has made me alienated, but maybe... Go in dark. Go, bring it back up. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing in that spare time? Oh, is your dad you smiling? I have, you smi a, I have a nice smile. You do have a nice smile. See? <laughs> Give it, you gotta end on a button. I am going to drive this carriage and Count Dracula is going to fist bump me when <laughs> I pull in because he says I'm a cool guy man. Exactly, exactly. See how easy that is? This was the most difficult thing I have done oh, in my life. You killed it though, <laughs> fantastic. Who are we killing? We're not killing, no, what? We're killing some, no, you're killing it. Oh, right. In your life. Yes, my long life. It never seems to end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Look, um... The others have come. And uh, <laughs> from the outside of the gold Krona Inn, you see everyone come out. As you exit and come out onto the street, you see that you are in a beautiful European town. The buildings here are super bright in primary colors, blue, yellow, red. Everything looks shiny and new, as though it's been washed and cleaned and shined to perfection for the Count's return. The cobbled streets are largely empty because it is nighttime when you come out, which is probably a relief for the vampires of the party. Uh, Squinch pops out of the, 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 uh, the inn we've been staying at into the darkness and looks around for uh, for everyone, it's like, um, so the, the Dark Lord is coming. Is everyone places? Daddy's back. Yes, Aren't you Daddy. excited? I am excited for Daddy to be back. As the right hand of Daddy, nothing, nothing is better in life than being next to Daddy. Such a good me. boy. Yes. Uh, yeah, my, there's like sort of a little <laughs> dent of pant fingers. <laughs> or soft, just like memory foam skin. Oh, such a beautiful anatomy. I've never seen anything like it. Yes. How does I it have. exist? I, long ago, when it was just me and Dracula, when he created me in his image, except that it was completely different because no one really looks you like look me. You look nothing like I each know. other. But it was because he had to figure out how to transform creatures into vampire. And they had to throw some stuff at the wall to see what sticks. Spaghetti. Spaghetti. What? Ooh. Is that why your head <laughs> looked like pasta? 
My head looks like sort of. Did both he throw wet you against the wall? <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> undulating uncomfortably. I can sort of make another head yes. by moving it. My brain is over there. <laughs> it's like that kind of sand that like collapses back onto yes. itself. If you Strange. were like working in an office, you could play with me while you were trying to think about it's something. It's oddly Strange. relaxing if you want to get in on this. It's triangle. like a stress ball. Yeah. Squinch, do you mind? I know I ask you all the time. May I take a sample of your head? If it will help you get count, be prepared for when the count arrives, you may take a small sample of my head. It has nothing to do with the count. Then nothing. give it back. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have to say my team, esteemed colleagues, confidants of count. Dracula, uh, I have not been outside for seven years, so this is a little frightening for me. This is the big day. It is the big day. Big night. I'm very scared. Disgraced Jewish scientist outdoors. Well, just scientist, okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, okay, okay, okay. My family was run out of my previous country. Oh, I'm so sorry, okay. It's okay. Okay, I'm so, okay. But if we could get a little bit of cover, it, I, it, I would be appreciating it. Oh, yeah, yes, I will. I have uh, prepared the insides. I believe our shadow beasts are somewhere in the stable. I shall go retrieve them henceforth. I am a beautiful individual with many qualities to offer. I have big manhood. Wow. Oh, no. That was good to no. know. OK, yeah, good. Yes. I love when a man who looks like a gaggle of branches says he is beautiful. Good job. Good you job, notice he like stands a little straighter because he feels like it worked. <laughs> it's like hunch goes back a little bit. Is this what it's like to be popular? And he walks off towards the stables to retrieve your shadow beasts. <laughs> he has left the carriage door open. Do any of you take the rider's seat or the driver's seat, I should say? Uh, I, I don't know if Squinch would drive, but definitely whatever feels like the most important seat, <laughs> you'll you go for it. Uh -huh. Yes, of course, where I should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you need help, buddy? Like I a got it. slog. Buddy? Okay, cool. <laughs> like mm. a slog. My head does undulate like a slug. A very Do not put salt on it. A very important position for a very important little boy. Yes, the little boy in charge. <laughs> the oldest little boy of all time. What a horrible little festering child of mine. Mm, mummy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are you okay? That looked like that hurt. Yes. Often does hurt to think about others than me and just Dracula, but I am expanding my consciousness to understand that we are all working together to bring the Dark Lord to us. And uh, I will sit up here. That's as vulnerable as I can be at all. <laughs> Incredible to watch you live. <laughs> Where do the rest of you sit? But I guess you kind of like need to know what <gasps> Dracula's ride looks like. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it is a stretch carriage complete with spokes on the wheels to take out anybody else that might try to cut you off in Transylvanian traffic and of course, Dracula's coffin compartment uh, is detachable what? for maximum, you know, comfort. Pimp my carriage. Pimp my carriage. <laughs> All the bells and whistles possible, including a bell and a whistle. <laughs> there is indeed a bell on the back that announces Dracula's sort of, every time he, uh, what is it, alights the carriage or when he descends from the carriage. Ring a ding ding. <laughs> Daddy? <laughs> Daddy's. The bell is for when Daddy is home. <laughs> Alexander is definitely like just like flies into the carriage, mm -hmm. afraid of, of the public. Gotcha. Possibly seeing him. I think Wetzel is on top 
like um like a almost like a lookout like oh, right at the top part like right here yeah and when he's kind of likes it because when we start going really fast like his jowls start like the skin flaps just start like moving back and forth like that like a dog mm -hmm. outside a, a car window yeah just like when May, um, May uh, uh, lights uh, in, into the, the step outside the carriage. Um, and as she leans out the window, uh, she, she waves to the inn and says, farewell, simple townsfolk. <laughs> if we brought a little bit of cheer to your dreary lives, then that is all that we could have ever asked for with our art. <laughs> like slams the carriage door behind her. <laughs> The whole thing shakes as Drego comes back with the four horses in tow. These are strange beasts, almost like this black fire-esque mist kind of coalesces. And every time they step, you don't hear any clip clopping. Their eyes are dark like voids, looking into them for the random passerby is very unsettling. And they're dressed up like funeral horses. <laughs> um, it does take Drago a while to track them all down because you haven't been caring for them. But thankfully, these things are already dead. So they he pulls up their rotted kind of carapaces held together, surely with dark magic and will and nothing else, hitches them to the carriage and gets into the driver's seat himself. He calls back into the passenger compartment that you are all in this front part here. He says, are we forgetting anything? Are we all ready to go? So like, I'm on the way, right? But like, I, I said I was gonna write 100 poems for the entire time that we were <gasps> waiting for the conference. How right? many you got? You I got zero, like, finished or yeah. zero. I have zero because I'm not exactly a writer, but like, I'm trying to figure it out. So if anyone has any rhymes for Dracula. 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 That's kind of where I was getting really hung up. Dracula. Or whatever you got. Dracula. Perhaps is a man who exists. In some time. So we got one. We got one. Cracula. Cracula. Spectacular. Spectacular. Oh, there you go. Drago. A slam dunk feel... from Drago. I feel like I am a new man. <laughs> eternity faces me down and weighs on my shoulders. Me like too! Several pound bag. My. But I am making people smile today and in that there is some small warmth in this cold endless existence that I ask to be released from every day. The camera shows the wife in, he in heaven, like, my husband, he is doing so well. <laughs> he is healing. <laughs> Carlos's internal camera. Yeah. <laughs> he cracks the reins and the four dread beasts pull away, taking you to the rail station. Now, it is 1855. And this railway station is the first of its kind in this part of Europe. It is shiny, it is new, it is two stories tall. There are even gas lights lining the cobble road outside. And in fact, the entire town of Fagari has kind of come alive and grown around this train station. You do see, as you're kind of pulling in with the carriage, a train pulling in along the tracks. There is some type of commotion happening over to your left. The station entrance is kind of thrown wide open, and you see people kind of milling in and about. The people here are very different than the local town people you see in Fagari. You see people from all walks of life, but they're a lot more richly dressed, almost as though they've been dressed up for travel. Mm. Uh, and you hear accents of all different kinds. Wow. People can move in way different ways than when I was a kid. When I was a child, we would just have to fall down mountains. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like, you know, the, the 1830s or? Mm -hmm. What a year that was? Gosh, lost track completely. Um, I want to say two, but maybe <laughs> that was, maybe it was sooner than that. Mm -hmm. Times have changed. You know, 
I remember the night I accidentally run you over with the carriage mm. and you were trampled by all four of the horses in turn by all six it up of the and wheels. You went back that way. I went out of the way to hit you. I thought you were some type of geist from the swamp who was attempting to take my soul. Everyone around here is very hung up on swamps. <laughs> and um you took it like a champ. I did, didn't I? Hmm. I still remember your cries as all four of the horses trampled you. It was like music to my ears. Wow. Okay. A disgrace to humanity to live through such a thing. Basically walking roadkill. <laughs> the most beautiful man I've ever seen in my life. Thank you. I am, um, I am quite gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> As the door to one of the train compartments opens, people are spilling outside, and now they're spilling out of the front doors of the train station. Um, you don't see Dracula anywhere. Uh, which carriage is he supposed to be in? Did it I would have to imagine say... the most uh, fancy one there is, the most beautiful. Is there is. a forced are there... class? Sorry, a forced class? A forced class? A forced class. Like you have the forest. Oh, oh, oh forest. Forest. I, I thought they were saying forest. Forest class. That would be forest. 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 forest class. <laughs> yes. As as yeah. you're saying this, you see a well dressed man with a bowler hat and a business card say, Oh, a first class man. I'm a first class man myself. Hmm. You look like you could do business with me. See, I'm in town looking for some good new investments, and you look like just the sort of chap that I might be interested in doing business with, a first-class kind of man for a first-class kind of business. Excuse me, sir, this is my adopted son, and as his legal guardian, I'm going to have to have any business come through me first. Oh, of course. I'm so sorry to skip the line. I thought that this man was your grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hmm. No, that is, I, I, actually, you're being very stupid. Well, that is my mommy. <laughs> well, he may be older than me. Maybe by a decades, maybe we don't decades, quite know. Maybe thousands of years. It sounded like you a know, couple millennia. I remember <laughs> fire being new. Oh, he says it's precious things. Anyway, um, if you were in the first class, did you see a very handsome man, very pale, possibly goatee? The only possible man prettier than me? I don't think I saw such a man. Uh, I did see a rather ornate coffin being held up there. It was taking up half the seat. Oh, that's him! Gotta him. Of I mean, like, gotta be him, right? And are you relatives of the big man himself, or? Mm. Yes, <laughs> we are. Oh, I myself am a distant cousin, six times removed. Of whom? Of the Count. I, can I roll an insight roll check? Him. Yes, roll an insight check. I'm gonna do one of okay. those for you. Um, oh yeah, I'm not good at that. 13. <laughs> um, I got a 14, so Ooh, I just barely... Okay. He, d his demeanor gives nothing away. Hmm. Um, looking at him physically, you feel like he does share some of the same planes of the face, maybe? Hmm. But you can't quite tell. Okay. Well, but the biggest thing you get from the insight check is it's almost like he's trying to sell you something. And like where we are, like people people know of the count. All you yes, know, like everyone knows about. Him. Yeah. He's um, got the biggest house on the hill. So what do you? Uh, what's your? So you're a, a businessman. You want to uh, make deals. I have my, of course, my mother slash uh, business manager here. S slash maybe sister. We slash don't know. Sister it's, or it's something all... like that. Mm. Oh yes, I wanted to kind of work at preserving some of Transylvania's deep history since, mm. you know, I hear that it, it's in my blood. I feel like someone, I mean, I'm sure you're all doing a great job, right? Well, I've written about 80 <laughs> half poems and I'll say Dracula is. <laughs> and, and, and now we've, we've got one complete line, Dracula is spectacular, that I guess I thought of. Oh, I guess that's how that went. Drago silently weeps in the background. <laughs> I'm kind of awesome at poems. But, Wetzel uh, is grinding his teeth and staring at the train because all he wants to do is get in there and get the coffin, see the count. Like, he's just like, okay, yeah, guys, uh, poems are great. Uh, we should probably jump inside uh, and, and go get that coffin right now, right? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Yes. Well, I uh, suppose I'll meet up with you later. I'll leave my card with you. 
Oh. And what does the card say? It is blank. Oh. A maybe criminal. Something, maybe something for you to investigate later. That's dope as hell. Let's get inside. Papa. One moment. May I see the card? Oh. Uh, I have on me my phantasmometer that Ooh. is active at the moment. An yes. intention that Alex made. And it can see anything that's invisible. Um, so if I'm able to look at the card and see if there's any sort of trick or invisibility on it. I would be able to yes. see that. Yeah, you see it immediately. Almost like runes at the edges kind of like come alight and like a almost like a liquid gold veins running through the card. And you do see on there Emil Ward. So he summons. Some he summons Ward. Yes. <laughs> and underneath it says um, purveyor of native antiquities. I'm gonna need to use detect thoughts real quick. Go for it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, as soon as you cast it, you learn the surface level thoughts mm -hmm. of the individual. Yeah, and I think I they make a wisdom deeper. save. Yes. Oh, ha ha ha. Um, five. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you attempt to peer into his mind, and you're not able to penetrate that layer deep inside to figure out exactly what his motivations are. But what you do glean is that he doubts what, that you are all related to the Count. Mm. He Be believes fine. that you're imposters. I believe he is a criminal. Oh, uh, yes. like of the, of the sexy kind or just? Hard for me to know whether a uh, criminal is uh, sexy or not, but all nonviolent crime is sexy a little bit, right? Kinda, yeah. I can see that. I stop myself from saying something. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to open it. Like embezzling is sexy. Oh, yeah. Littering. Fraud. Littering. Sexy. Mm. Wow. Stick it to the man. Fuck the planet. Mm. <laughs> Parking tickets. The movie's hackers. Public <laughs> urination. <laughs> you know, when you gotta go, you gotta go. Alex goes into the train. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for me! You runs after it. Rush through the crowded train station. You attract a few looks. There's a well dressed woman tending to like eight dogs that she's just disembarked the train with. And sure enough, you see a beautiful maroon lacquered train car. Clearly, this has to be the first class car. Mm -hmm. And there, perched precariously, Right in the doorway is a gorgeous coffin. And you recognize the rosewood and you recognize the saffron smell emanating from it. At its feet, you see almost like a thin mist that forms little hands and crawls up the sides of the coffin. This has to be him. So uh, I run up to the coffin and I throw it wide, baby! As your hand touches the coffin, it's intercepted rather quickly by a pickaxe. Ow! And when you look over, there is a stout man with brown skin. His tussled hair is stuffed underneath the cap. And he's looking at you a bit, not sternly, but with a little bit of authority in his voice. Get your pickaxe off of my husband. Uh, well, let me introduce myself. Hello, ma'am. It's not my intent to keep your husband here locked away in this in this here contraption, but we've got some grievances here at the local 47. It's very important. And you see behind him, there are a group of union railway workers, all with blue scarves and blue hats. Sir, uh, <laughs> Wessel's going crazy. Like we are not opening up this coffin fast enough. Uh, sir, uh, excuse me, uh, if we can just uh, remove the coffin, we will be on our way. Thank you very much. You're blocking a very important reunion um, right now. If Oh yeah, my heart goes out to you. Wessel fetch the coffin. What do you mean your heart goes out to us? What is going on here? Y'all were supposed to send a representative to the local 47 meets to discuss our contract that's lapsed. You know, we've just kind of been working here and there's two months past due as I need to be paid, you know? I'm assuming y'all support unions. Where's Count Dracula? Drown down these parts, there are ways to do things. It's now I know you come from America where the almighty we dollar reigns supreme. We specifically do not come from America. We are, we're Was that Yankee accent? 
Are you from America? <laughs> well, yeah. Why do you think I came here? Okay. Uh, to get away oh. from that type of horrible mentality. I'm from oh. Pangea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering why you ever would we be needing to pay dues to you? Isn't that sort of what you do? Use dues, dues? Use dues, de dues. Did we open the fucking coffin already? Make an intimidation check. <laughs> <laughs> it's like wigging out. Yes. We are so close. <laughs> Uh, it's a friendly role there. Uh, 22. Well, thank you kindly. You know, uh, I'll, I'll reconvene with you wonderful people later in a classic middle America fashion. He draws this out as long as he possibly <laughs> I, I, can. I, I, Goodbye! We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna slowly push you out of that. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful <laughs> evening. Uh, great weather we're having, ain't it? <laughs> okay, goodbye. Yeah, it's nice and gloomy in the same as... <laughs> very, very cold for this time of year. Our Darkness! As you cast darkness, you notice he disappears, and it's almost as though you're left in this dark void with this glistening coffin alone, and everything else has kind of fallen away. With an almost ethereal nature, as you're gnawing on the side of it, Wetzel, it opens. You hear a pneumatic hiss as the lid begins to slowly swing open. As it does, this fog falls away slowly, kind of occupying the space around the four of you. And you see this beautiful individual, high cheekbones, manicured eyebrows, mm -hmm. impossibly large teeth, over plump ruby red lips. And he comes forward. <gasps> Hello, kittens. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I mean, hello. Yeah. It pleases me to see you all here on time. A feat, truly. Yeah, we've been here for, for a little while, but I mean, I'm very happy to see you. It's just I've missed you so much. Oh, you are but the most precious fruit of my <gasps> loins. He oh. takes one nail and it lingers on your chin. Wow. Daddy's home. And you, my dear, how have you fared in my absence? I miss you so much, but now that you're here, we can get back to making adorable little babies. <laughs> Sasha. My count. Your brilliance, I feel it envelop me. How I've missed your aura of intellect in the presence of idiots. Likewise, my friend. Wetzel. <laughs> yes? How are you, my little flay thing? Huh? I'm doing pretty good. Um, <laughs> it, it made a bunch of new friends. I got to hang out with these guys over here. A uh, little tripped up by this union dude early on, but uh, you look fantastic. How was your trip? The new world contains delights. Hmm. I feel young again when I step in a country that is new. I'm sure you miss it, May. <laughs> new stuff like wheels. Yes, uh, I even in part took in something called a hot dog hot while dog. in... Dog. New York. I thought it would be a little bit furrier than it was, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. Or like a hellhound or... Oh, you would think... That New York street meat, that's gonna get ya. But these union people you speak of... Uh, I'm assuming you've taken care of things in my two-year absence. Two? Wait. Uh, two? Absolutely. In two, two years? Yes. I wrote a letter telling you of my ship's delay. There was a storm. At sea. Did you not return to the manor? Uh, yeah. We were. Was it I, I, two whole years? Would, would you would you say that I still have that horrible? <laughs> Make a wisdom saving throw. Oh. See if you brought it. No. <laughs> you ate it. Yes. 
how time I, sort of sort of two years I thought we were I, I misunderstood I think I um sort of not not like a I, I organization's not my key strength I'm more of a poetry guy um yes I guess we we he came up with a wonderful rhyme for yes. you that's what I've been working on for the last two years do you want to hear it <laughs> Dracula is spectacular, and that is my gift to you. Make a <laughs> performance check, but... Uh, quadruple disadvantage, or...? You're going to make it in the box of Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> because you're talking to Daddy Dearest. Yes. I can't see it. 18. <gasps> Yeah! 18. 18 on the die with your modifier. Uh, 19. I've been working very hard for the last two years. <laughs> I have done dark, treacherous things in my life. But today, I created you. I did the one good thing that I needed to do to atone for my sins. You're such a good father. Oh, I miss my it's children. Like how I dream of the way that you would talk to me. This is like unreal. Also, I'm Sasha. You have children. Fifteen boys. We've never seen wow. them. You've been here for years. They're in the old country. I, oh. oh this is this is about my compliment, everybody, please. Yes! Yes. Draco's outside crying. <laughs> well, let us be off. There's many things to take care of, many things to discuss. With a hand, he disperses the darkness. There is something that's been weighing heavy on my mind, you all see, and boom! A cannonball comes flying what? from your right. For a moment, you just see his face frozen as half of his skull oh! is shattered. No! A large gaping hole is a sucking wound is left with where his chest cavity used to be. He stands frozen for a moment and then slumps back into the oh. coffin. Roll for initiative. What? Hey, master! <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. Lay it on me. Me first? Mm-hmm. Um, I got a six, but I would like to use my flash of genius and add five. Okay. So that I have an 11. Perfect. I have a 14. A 14. 21. Very Ooh. nice. 21. 10. <laughs> And let's go to the battle. Welcome to the train station. Yes! The town of Fagari's pride and joy. Yes, looking around you on the station platform, you see the beautiful first class car. You see a bunch of vendors out front, tons of crates and things like that that smell delicious that have just been offloaded from the train. Behind you, you see the newly constructed train station. State of the art, first of its kind. You know in your hearts that Drago is really sad somewhere on the other side of it. You have <laughs> gas lamps on this beautiful cobble lit street road. Should we take a look inside the station? Yeah! Oh my gosh! What? <laughs> oh my oh. god! Inside the station, bustling, full of life. We yeah. have. Whoa. Whoa. Ticketing counters galore, a back office, a front foyer, a little waiting room with tons of people going about their business from all walks of life. You see some locals from the village. You see some out of town tourists. You see your friend with the business card. That's how much detail we have on set. Thank you so much. Wonderful man, Rick Perry. This is the site that you see before you. Oh my God, I love it, love it. I wish I could enjoy this, but. <laughs> <laughs> And enjoy it you shall, because Carlos Wetzel, you are first up. Ooh. Where are you standing? Oh, oh, there's a mini oh, reveal. Oh, yes, place yourself where you would be standing, you think, um, on the board. We have Dracula's little coffin here, too. Where, where's Dracula? You see his broken, 
body with a huge hole missing oh, out of it. Oh no! The laying master. on the floor, slumped against the <gasps> coffin. Oh. Uh. He looks rough. That's not normally what he looks like. <laughs> so were, was I? Where was I when when the explosion happened? Was you I? You tell me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I think I would be groveling near the master. Yeah. Go uh, ahead and place yourself there. Okay. So let's put me right around this area. I know that there's such a thing as a surprise round. Should we have a grovel round? A grovel right, round. Yeah, so there's a special, nice special initiative for grovel rules. Yeah. The grovel. The gra- I always forget the rules for grovel. <laughs> Second up in the initiative track, we have Squinge. Squinge. Oh my oh, god. Oh boy. Wow. The arms are just a little oh, too long. He's disgusting. <laughs> He's. Beautiful oh. and horrible. <laughs> yeah. and exactly disgusting. what you wanted. Gosh, just look a, at the ruffles. Just a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a sweet little My son. Huge boy. boy. <laughs> I, I I have to admit, I think he'd be just right over there. Yeah, over. of course. Yeah. Do you want me to place him for you? Yeah, yeah. You know. And of course, Alexander. Oh my God. <gasps> oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's so cute! <laughs> My little green potion! Father of 15 boys. Father of 15 <laughs> boys. <laughs> Good breeding straw! My turtle marina! <laughs> <laughs> He's right there. Last but not least, me! <gasps> May. Oh, oh my God! Right from Hollywood, darling. <laughs> oh, that. Uh, <laughs> Compare <it> with <laughs> Emma. Incredible. It's perfect. Um, I'd be over uh, at, at the coffin. Is the coffin got knocked over? Yes, the blast okay. of it. Yeah. In fact, it would actually right. probably be kind of like a mm-hmm. jar here. Press that down, and Dracula has fallen back on it, kind of mm-hmm. indisposed. So, all at once, there is chaos. You smell gunpowder in the air. It's probably a very familiar smell for you. You smell that 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 uh, sort of ashy, sulfury scent, and behind you, you hear a voice off to the left a gravelly voice, and you see a filthy matted head with one stroke of silver kind of rise up from these boxes over here. A wicked, hatchet-faced man kind of stands taking cover behind these crates and barrels here. And he says, You fool, Kirin! I've told you, this is our shot. May your aim be true. Reload the cannon. And off on a handcart in the distance, you see this figure begin to reload the cannon. And you hear her say, on it, master. And then you hear him say, rally, anti-vampires, vampire club. What? And that will be where we call today's episode. Uh, wow! Yeah! And we will see you next time right here on Dimension 20 Coffin Run. I know something you don't know. Oh, <laughs> good Lord. Oh, no. Here. How dare you? He gets. <laughs> I worked a really long time on this. I thought you'd be screaming in terror. I was doing some rapid I rewriting in my head. Oh, God. <laughs> oh no. He's dancing. He's fucking dancing. Absolutely <laughs> challenging imagery. Shut up! <laughs> you fucking letter eater! <laughs> I've had enough of you! Props, 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 props! Hi, guy, 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 Drago, yes, I pop the trunk. Pop it. Yes, I will pop the trunk. Pop the trunk. Sheesh. Get out of my way. Ooh. Yes. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> One train leaves Transylvania at 3 p.m. A hand cart is approaching it. Oh my god. I never thought I'd have to take the SATs again. Uh, you know what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> you know.